This one kick changed the world forever. But very few people know the actual reason why it wasn't supposed to happen. You see, once upon a time, Kamaru Usman was on top of the world. We're talking 15 USC wins in a row, big time sponsors, Disney movies, Watch your tone, Jabari. and only one more win away from tying Anderson Silva's win streak record. And he's done everything perfectly. You couldn't have a better trajectory than he's had. But the only one who came close was Leon Edwards. I don't think he is what you think he is, you know? Everybody knows when Kamaru Usman's fighting, you don't bet against him. Uh, a lot of the talk this week has been like, hey, what if you are you know, slipping a little bit? It's because you're number one pound for pound. If they're thinking that I'm slipping, it's going to be a bad night for them. line that hides a dark backstory. What is it like growing up when your father is running a gang? Welcome to Kingston, Jamaica, where guns and gangs drive the drug trade. I was born from a mom that had me when she was 15 years old. Coming from Jamaica and Kingston, which is the capital of Jamaica, from a poverty, crime-ridden area, um, it was hard, you know? Where I grew up, the houses are made out of like wood as the frame and like zinc as the roof. And in that one shack, that's, that was your living room, your bathroom, your kitchen, your dining, everything is in that one shack, right? These shacks are part of small urban communities known as garrisons. Some of these garrisons are led by politicians, others by gangsters. Hey, it's JLP or PMP? JLP and PNP are the two main political parties in Jamaica. Historically, they've each been known to finance street gangs to gain more influence. In doing so, pitting the garrisons against one another. People died over like basic politics. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's wild out there. But what took the violence to the next level is the drug trade. You see, Jamaica is halfway between the US and Colombia. When the cocaine trade started in the 70s, Jamaica became a drug trafficking hub. The war on drugs began. This we can't forget is a battle against highly dangerous criminals, people who export and distribute poison throughout our communities in America. Today I'm committing another $73 million to help support the interdiction efforts in Latin America and the Caribbean. I was in the war zone when I was a kid, you know, it become the norm and being around like crime and guns and shooting. I lost count from people I've known that's like murdered. I was able to normalize shootings and stabbings and killings, you know, it was like a normal day in the life. And As you can probably tell, the people in the garrisons were pretty much left to themselves. So when they needed help, they turned to gang leaders. We show up jokes, we rap people, but we use the wrong things and turn it into good things in our community. They helped create schools. They helped to make sure that people had medical care. They became the Robin Hoods from an early time. As a kid, it's like, my dad is this guy, you know? So he was a special person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Leon's dad was known around town as the general. From quite a young age, I knew what he was involved with, from how much respect people show him and how much respect people show us. Coming from hardship, I understand the mentality that you do whatever you, you have to do for your family. He did what he needed to do to provide for me and my mom and my family, you know what I mean? And I love him for that, I respect him for that, and, and that's it. Yeah, it's very difficult for anybody else to, yeah. to judge if you're not living in, yeah. that, in that situation. At eight years old, Leon discovers 
that he has a brother. I didn't know I had a brother. My mom and dad split up. They met me when um, I was about six. My dad took Fabian to his nans. No one mentioned that I had a brother, which is <laughs> tough. We didn't really fight much. We weren't like, I was a little scratch here and there, but he's like calm, I'm calm. He's like, it's rare that we that we, that we fought, you know, but. After bringing his brother home, Leon's father, left the country. My dad came to the UK. Yeah, whatever he did to bring back money back into the community to buy guns and it was selling drugs, you know. He realized it was a dangerous environment. To have his kids in, in the UK was a better opportunity for you to get a, get a better life for yourself and for, for your family and that's what he did. And we brought me, my mom and my brother to the UK for a better life. If he didn't do that, I'd probably have been dead in Jamaica or, you know what I mean? So, fair play to him. Came to the UK when I was 10, 11. In Birmingham, Jarvis Road, this is where I grew up with me, my brother and my mom. And I came over in winter as well. I remember stepping off the plane thinking, oh, no one could understand me. We yeah, speak patchwork, which is Jamaican um, broken English. Being a kid, it's like funny, you know, just see like another kid speaking funny, but. Everyone in school was like, what the are you saying in that, you know? Especially in Birmingham back in the days, was, um, a big gang culture like Johnson's and Burger Bars and those are the two main gangs in Birmingham back in the days. And it's either fight or flight, right? Because on the way home from school, you have to see if you're going to fight or you can get robbed daily, you can get bullied daily. Leon, as a teenager, I'm always getting to fight. I used to bring like a knife to school when I was young. Get the f yeah. Everyone got a knife, so you don't go oh, without a knife. You know? What? Yeah, yeah. That is, Birmingham is wild. Like school is wild. Did you ever worry that you were going to go down that path? Yeah, I was, I was going down that path. I've been growing up, that's all I thought. Oh, get, yeah, I want to be a gangster. <laughs> like my dad and all. This is the way to get respect, this is the way to do it. But it's not. I was age 13. I was sleeping in bed and I was with my mom. Mom got the phone call at two in the morning. And she was like, bursting out like in tears and crying and crying. I was like keeping my eyes closed still. Pretend like I, like I couldn't hear her, basically. I was like, kept my eyes shut. Like, pretend like I was still sleeping, but I could hear her like crying over the phone. She woke, she woke me up, she like, your dad um, just got killed in, um, in London. And uh, that's how I found out. Yeah. How does, how does a 13 year old I'm a mad numb to the, to the trauma. Tell the girl, you're no longer a kid no more, you know, then. It was weird because like I didn't even cry, you know what I mean? It's like a mad feeling. I, like, I, di I didn't even cry. Even though I felt it, I just couldn't cry for some reason. I don't know what it was. Okay, everyone around me was dying, you know? So like, that was the outcome, like eventually, when, when he passed. I, I just remember the, like, the, the, the switch, you know? And, yeah. My mum was working every day to provide and so no one in the house apart from me, my brother Fabian, and she just go out and just do what, do what we're doing, you know? And, and I'm sure you were angry, and I'm sure that there yeah, was a lot sure. of rage there. Yeah, for sure. Um, Did you get yourself in trouble? Yeah, yeah. You got to think from a kid, if you get taught just like crying pays, that's the only way I knew how to do it, is to go down that path, even though I didn't want to go down that path. From there, when I like a bad spiral. I started getting in trouble by just like joining gangs and... I got a little brother about Fabian, he was following my footsteps and... He was getting into trouble as well. And he was following the same path as me, you know, he even got arrested and actually went to prison. Couldn't see it like another way out because everyone around me is doing the same thing. If you don't get something to do, you will end up being stuck in this environment. One day I was walking past my mom. I saw that thing building up. And I said, Leon, it looks like a gym. You should give it a go. I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I know the reason why she was saying it is to keep me away from my friends, you know? I was yeah. like, because she was worried about me going to prison or might end up being dead in the streets. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll get, just like, keep, like, keep her happy, right? Yes. I didn't know what MMA was. Uh, I didn't know what, what the UFC was. I went up to the gym, um, inquired about the membership. At the time, membership was um, £60 a month. That's a lot for a gym back then, yeah. even now, you know what I mean? And as a single mom, I know that she couldn't afford it. And I thought that's, that's a, a hefty monthly price tag for a single mom, you know. But she's like, she's like, listen, I'll pay for it. Just go, just do it. I said, cool, I'll give it a go for you. 
Talk to me about that sacrifice then. Because your mum at the time, her, was she cleaning? What was cleaning she doing? job, yeah. She worked like two or three jobs at a time back then, you know what I mean? And she took on like another job just to pay the membership for me. And... Mum is supporting Leon. Always supporting Leon. I think that's where I get my work ethic from and my sacrifice from from my family because I see what, what, what they did for me, you know what I mean? For some reason, people think that when you're raised by just your mom, you can't grow up tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, nah. clearly you yeah, did yeah, that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> my, my, my mom is tough, you know? Work, work. Like, she had to be tough. She always believed in me, you know? She's always said, like, just, just, just train, you know what I mean? Like, well, in Jamaican, just train and do your thing, yeah, yeah. Just do your thing and you, you, you'll achieve it. To make your mom proud. Yes. Yeah. For, for, for son. Especially when you're going down like the wrong, you, when you weren't making her proud. So to get to a point where you, when you are making her proud, she's telling you she's proud of you. And um, you can see like, the, the joy in your mom's face. Um, it's, it's an amazing moment, man. It's good. Do you recall the first time you met Leon Edwards? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. It grabbed my eye straight away um, just because of the natural talent he had. I seen them sparring and it was mainly all about headshots with Leon. He was asking advice from me and I was giving it to him till he asked me one day, well, I want you in my corner. And from there, I was in his corner ever since. Uh, I've adopted him like a, a former figure, you know. I've seen the potential in this kid. This guy has definitely got the tools to be a world champion. Uh, positive reinforcements I was getting from the coaches, from the teammates, saying, like, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve it. Growing up, I never had that. Growing up, it was more just about surviving. To have now people reinforcing your confidence, saying, look, you're good. If you stick to it, you can achieve something. Did right you now. start believing in that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. The yeah, energy just switches, you know, like, the, the, my world opened up and I stay in the gym all day and I train again at night. I was spending so much time in the gym that I weren't hanging around in the street no more with my friends. You know, this is a kid that, as you know, could have easily gone down that path. It very easily and his brother. I just stuck to it. I stuck to it. My brother followed me. That's it. You know, I see my brother doing well. I'm thinking, I want to do well as well. He got into MMA as well. And Changes his life around me. I don't think I admit that I looked up to my brother, but I do look up to him though. You see someone else do good, you want to do good as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just keep driving each other on. Yeah, I'm assuming you two train with each other, right? Yeah. Talk about the best training partner on planet Earth. Just need like a challenge in your life, you know, something to put your energy into as a young man. The path that, 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 that you walk, I think that plays a big part in your life, you know. And what about when the UFC came calling? When was that, 2015? My manager phoned me into the gym and said, oh, what do you think about finding Brazil? I was like, Huh? I was like, yeah, the US are just called cool. like crying and shit. I was like, oh, perfect, you know, because yeah, yeah. like, it's like everything you worked towards uh -huh. as a kid. And getting to the USC was a big thing for me. When I fought my mom, I fought everyone, like, I'm in the UFC. They couldn't believe it, you know. Got a short notice fight um, in Brazil um, against Claudio Silva. But his debut in the UFC would be rougher than he expected. I lost my first fight in um, the UFC. Um, How was that feeling? Horrible. It affected me um, drastically, you know, to build up your career to get to this point in your career and then getting there and failing when you first heard it was like ah oh, like it's like just heartbroken you know just feel like the whole like world is shutting down on you like and it wouldn't be the end of it because after winning his second and third fight the ufc matched him against the future king of the division when he fought usman that changed him the nigerian nightmare that's what he wants to be known as kamaru usman up until that point it stopped everybody as well by the way he is a stud athlete ridiculous wrestling ridiculous athleticism and in the face of that challenge leon took a surprising decision it was a weird thing where it's like you get to like a level and like, oh, you need to go to america the older guys are telling you this you need to go to america you can't do it from birmingham it's, there's no one there to train with i started believing it went to um aka you know i left my team um, back home in birmingham and I kind of start thinking def defensively, like I need to learn wrestling, I need to do this, I need to do that. All defensive, you know, I was going there with like a defensive mind state. That's not a good way to look at life or fighting. You should go out there, do your thing and let him adapt to you. There was glimpses in the fight, in the stand up, Leon was starting to get the better of him. And Kamaro just resorted to what he knew, which was the wrestling. But it was absolutely a competitive fight. That was his first ever decision that Leon Edwards extended him to. I oh, knew that eventually we'll meet each other again in the future. Once I came back and we organized my team and gave me the right place. I realized I don't need to go to America. I need to stay back home with my family, with my, with my coaches, and my training partners. What got me in the US, he got me winning. He just vowed that it's not gonna happen to him again. And I started focusing on myself, focusing on being a better martial artist, not just a striker. And that shift would mark the beginning of an eight fight win streak. Well, on that win streak, he got some good scalps under his belt along the way. I've got my own little way out to, you know, boost him up. Yeah, man. Give him that confidence and that belief. His brother Fabian also turns pro and eventually joins Bellator. I'm proud of 
proud of him, you know, what he's achieving. Um, cause always copy what I did, you know. When I, when I was on the street, he kind of like went down the same path as me. And when I came to MMA, he got involved in MMA, you know. So I'm very happy now to be a positive role model in his life, you know. Despite his long win streak, Leon didn't get a big promo push from the UFC. They instead placed their chips on another Englishman from Liverpool. Till was the blue eye boy. He was seen as the man in England. Leon, because of his character, is a bit laid back and... He wasn't the main attraction. He'd done more in the UFC at that point than Darren had. The social media and the shouting off at the gob, that's not his thing. The UFC wants someone that's going to be talking a lot and acting brash and da 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 Leon's not that person, Leon doesn't go out there, give you a good fight. The two of them would end up fighting on the same night in London, but not against each other. Leon Edwards was fighting Gunnar Nelson, Masvidal was fighting Darren Till in the main event, Darren and Leon, they were having a little bit of beef. Oh, did the UFC ever come to you with the Rocky fights? No, didn't ever. This one the main event to make him and, and George. It was me versus him. That's what should have happened, not, not George. Come on Leon, don't kid yourself brother. Come on. Well, right now in England, I'm the number one. You're not number one. Well, I am on the main event, mate. For some reason, it's the same as boxing. The, Eng the English don't fight the English. Leon, do you think I'm scared yeah? you get your beating this year. Don't worry. Mm. I just know one thing. I'll punch a hole in your face. And that would happen. Although Darren wouldn't be the one punching. When he came out on fight night and he's getting booed, by his home fans, that must have really stung me on, and he didn't deserve it. They are cheering the, the, the away team, you know, they are cheering good announcing it in from the UK. I was a little puzzled, but of course Darren is, you know, extremely popular. At the time, I like, blocked it all out, and then I beat good announcing, and Till got knocked out by Masvidal. <laughs> And then that sneaky little rap massive what he did after. Jorge Masvidal and Leon Edwards kind of got into a little bit of something backstage. Well, Karen, as you saw just moments ago, I was in the middle of a live interview with Jorge Masvidal. And Leon Edwards walked by. What happened there? Man, this guy, he's one of these hooligans, man. Initially, um, I was doing my interview, and he's crossing by, and he's with his corner, man. Man's tried to duplicate it, but they can't find the recipe for it, you know? He was walking like this, looking at me, and like pacing back and forth, and I'm trying to do my interview, you know? And he asked me something about something, a date. I was like, oh, I'll fight, I'll see you in July, and that was it. July. Let's talk about that opening sequence. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> he goes on to say, shut up, after that. I can't take that. My daughter might be watching this interview. I've been telling her, stand up to bullies your whole life. Jorge walked his direction. <laughs> Shout out, come over, he said, come over. As I'm walking up to him, I got my hands behind my back to signal I'm, I'm not coming here for problems. But he put his hands up like this in some video and he walks towards me. Well, I had to give him the three piece with the soda. So the security like grabbed my, my arms back and just took him away. Where we're from and how we've been brought up, that's what's called a Judas. That's assault, simple as that, that's assault, that's not what we're doing here. That's assault, bro. That's assault. If I did everything in my right to defend myself, it was one against like three or four dudes and they know it. Did you worry at all them. about getting in trouble for punching somebody in another country? I was scared out of my f***ing life, yeah, Joe. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I was scared. Of, I thought this guy was going to kill me, man. And at this point, Leon Edwards has left the building, and Jorge Masvidal has been escorted out. That man went back there in London. You know, he put his hands on you. You guys didn't do nothing. You have to get escorted out of the country. They hid him from me. Hey, you, they you and man them did me. nothing. They, they hid him from me. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know. They called the police. They called the police. him. That's what happened. They hit him. They hit him, you'd have been dead. I country. wanted to press charges. Ah. I, that's how scared I was, but I'm not gonna I press understand. charges because I understand. I'm a man. We could have pressed charges, but where we're from, we don't roll that way. And we just thought, well, okay, payback's a bitch, but we'll get you somewhere down the line. Did you expect that a fight was gonna come after that? Yeah, for sure. I thought, okay, next, that's that's, that's the next fight, right? right. Straight away. And that's what would happen, either on the street or in Hotchkin. But if they were coming, I'll, I'll look forward to putting the beating on it. And then he couldn't even get revenge because they went with Ben Askren, of course. We all remember that. And then Jorge gets on this incredible run. And I think they was protecting him, you know? I think they was giving him the right matchup to favor him to try to build a star. They know if they gave me to master at the time or, or to kill the hype. Masvidal was on top of the world and Leon was kind of getting left in the shadows. And what does Leon have to do? What does he get for his troubles, for his embarrassment? 
for getting screwed over. What does he get? He gets Rafael Dos Anjos, one of the toughest outs in the game in San Antonio, Texas. Beating Rafael Dos Anjos, that's like the line in the sand. That. That's like you can't deny me anymore. Look what I've just done to the former champion. Yeah, he's cutting up RDA. And it's after defeating RDA that Leon finally gets a title eliminator fight against Tyron Woodley. He's gonna fight another former champion in Tyron Woodley, who at the time was hot. He was like a fight of the dream to headline his home show, you know. This is a big opportunity for me to beat someone like Tyron Woodley. It's gonna be amazing. He would have fought for the belt after that fight. Simple as that. Um, on the Sunday before the fight, the corona hit. NBA suspended, NHL suspended, I mean sports in general suspended. A lot of sports organizations with billions of dollars behind them have shut things down. And obviously then everything gets locked down. We can't fly anywhere, nobody in the UK can go anywhere, and shows go on over in the state. Leon Edwards is the guy who gets the short end of the stick in all of this. Couldn't travel, couldn't train. The division moves on. Tyron Woodley ends up fighting Gilbert Burns, who racks up the win and gets the title shot. And then the number one contender, Gilbert Burns, gets COVID. On six days notice, phone call goes in to Leon Edwards, who hasn't been in the gym for five months. You need to go to the airport right now. Now he's like, what are you, what, what, what are you talking about? Can you go five? I'm gonna go five to the championship. Now you're telling me I have to leave my family, I have to go to the United States, and I don't know when I could come back? No, I gotta sit out. And because of that, there's unfair punishment that comes his way. I woke up in the morning, I was high rankings, I was like, what's going on? To be removed from the rankings through no fault of his own. It wasn't like he lost. What's going on? What the f is the UFC playing at? He does go to show the disrespect that he's been having. It was madness, you know, um, the try put um, Shemaev on me first and I was like, why, why should I fight a guy just came to the UFC? I'm ranked number two, three in the world at the time. And Where do you think that came from? I don't know. I don't know. Everyone was turning him down, you know, and... Uh... Um, I would dive into how dangerous Hamza Chimaev was back then, except I'm releasing a full documentary on him next week. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell. Also, if you want your name in the credits of that one, make sure you sign up to my Patreon, link below. Let's keep it going. So I was like, okay, I'll go out there, I'll, 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 I'll fight him. He accepted the fight and he was back in the rankings. And when, when I beat him, I'll fight for the world title. And that, that was my plan, right? Hamza Chimaev and Leon Edwards will not be taking place on December 19th. I had COVID, um, I, I couldn't um, do the fight. We got rescheduled for, for January. But then unfortunately, Hamza went and caught COVID. Twice he agrees to fight Hamza. Canceled. The UFC was adamant to um, reschedule again the Hamzat fight, you know. And if Hamzat Shimaev will take on Leon Edwards March 13th, Dana White is rebooking this for the third time. He pulled out again from lingering COVID effects. Three times he agrees to fight Hamzat. Canceled. Back in the US, Kamaru Usman literally starts to lap the division. And so who is Kamaru fighting? He's fighting Jorge, he's fighting Colby, he's fighting. Dorino, he's fighting all these guys, right? He's lapping them, right? He's fighting them twice. That must be incredibly frustrating. Yeah, 100%. Do you see guys that's fought for the title twice? What has it been like going through this this low where you, you couldn't get a fight? A lot of ups and downs, but I, I, I use that time off to to grow, right? I kind of changed my, men my mentality, like, hey. Let's stop blaming everything around me. I can't control guys turning me down. I can't control not being able to travel. If I can control what I can control, which is training, you know, all we could do is turn up to the gym um, every day and train and just keep improving, knowing that one day I'm going to have to fight, right? It's going to have to be, I'm going to have to fight somebody. So get better, improve where you're, where you're, where you're lacking. Um, so that's what I did. I improved where I was lacking. After sitting on the sideline for almost two years, Leon finally gets a fight. Bilal, Bilal's um, name came up and I was like, okay, Bilal stepped up, he wants to fight. The game plan was for Leon to jump on Bilal quick, put him in his place. You know, to let him know that he wasn't in Leon's league. I went out there, felt great in the first round, shook him up, almost put him away. And then second round, eye poke. When you're kicking, you don't hold you don't hold your fist and kick like this, right? You kind of use it to momentum to mm -hmm. swing your arm back. And as I was doing it, he kind of just like grazed his eyes. Oh, oh, another poke. Stop. Oh, it's a uh, poke in the eye. Yeah. And then the body kick. Oh, yeah. oh my god, this looks like a bad one. This does not sound good. Are you seeing double? I can't see anything. I can't see anything. Herb Dean officially waves it off. The fight got called off, but no contest, even though I was winning the fight. You just gotta feel for Leon Edwards. Been away for so long, and then this happened. What is he doing? How many mirrors has he smashed? How many black cats has he walked past? How many ladders has he gone under? This is the most unfortunate thing for Leon Edwards. You know, it's been a long journey to get back to where we are now. And to have that unfulfilling end to the fight, what do you 
look for next, you know, because nothing's answered. You're on the verge of a title fight. There's only so much bad luck that people can take. No, no, no. <laughs> Man, Leon's just cursed, man. He's just cursed. Bad things happen to Leon. I mean, is that kind of how... I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm, I still believe I'll be a world champion. That's my main aim and that's my goal. And that's what I'm working towards. You know, I, I am going to be a world champion at the end of the day. And... Leon gets another chance at securing a title shot, this time by fighting one of the most beloved fighter on the roster. This is the high profile fight that Leon Edwards has wanted. Leon Edwards hoping tonight to leave as the number one contender and set up a championship opportunity. Uh, he had a tremendous streak of bad luck over the last couple of years, and then finally you got this high-level showcase fight against a big opponent like Nate Diaz. If he can go out there and perform like Leon Edwards can, he's going to be a star tonight. And that's exactly what Leon did, putting on a masterclass for four rounds until one punch in the fifth. Look at Nate. Looking like a horror movie. He is as game as they come. Oh! 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 He hurt! And we're going all the way right for the minute to go! Oh! 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 An upset for the ages! Oh my goodness! He's got him hurt! You better be kidding me! This is crazy! Oh! Oh! seconds of this five round affair! Wow! Wow! The judges give Leon a unanimous decision, but the fans see Diaz as the winner. Again, he can't get the victory. He can't get the victory in the people's eyes. Nathan Farron is getting my respect in here tonight, and I look forward to the world title shot next. I have fought everybody. I have offered to fight everybody, so I feel I deserve a title shot now. But instead, he's offered another fight he can't turn down. After over two years in the making, Leon Rocky Edwards finally gets his shot against the one and only Jorge Masvidal. This is like a stop off, you know, I want to just get, get, get it out of the way, get it done, get, it, get the score settled and move on to my, my well-deserved title shot. Jorge Masvidal versus Leon Edwards is officially off UFC 269. Undisclosed injury for Masvidal, no word yet on whether it will be rebooked or UFC will move on. And how can you let that go? I can't let it go. Damn. It's not let go. That's like three years ago. Wow. You know, I have to get it back, you know, either in the Octagon or on, on, on the street, you know, he asked, asked me to get back. And now he's left in limbo. And again, he's just like, man, when is it going to go my way? These past couple of years, Leon, have certainly not been easy for you. You had, what, six cancelled fights. So I had eight camps and only two fights. Now it's been a, a stressful time. And I, like I said, I believe I'm for a reason, and when the time comes, the journey will pay off, you know? How much bad luck has that kid been through? You know what I mean? It, he's been through it all. I'm wishing for nothing but good luck for, for Edwards this year. He's, he's had a rough run. Seven years after losing to Kamaru, Leon gets his rematch. Now here we are, like I said, um, fighting for the World Tower next. He is the able, everyone makes out like he's not, but he is, you know, and I, I, I'll show it on time. He starts throwing some shots and he starts dipping his head away. That's when we're looking for the head yeah, kick. <laughs> That's it, that's the one. All of his career has come down to this one moment, and he earned it every single step of the way. I've dreamed about this moment for a long time. To see it fulfill his journey, oh man, I, I can't express what that would mean to me. Wrapping the bat around my waist, you know me, passing it to a mop, just to finish what my dad started. There's no way I could explain my life and how far I've came if this wasn't meant for me. Ready, let's fight. I went back to the court and I said a little prayer to myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> One moment. No problem. I just wanted him to just go out on the shield.
What's wrong with you? Listen, stop feeling sorry for your f***ing self. Well, come on then. You ain't come this f***ing in way now. You're too f***ed down. You're going to fall out of the fire. Come on, Leon, man. You got it, man. Come on. All right, fifth and final round. We'll see what Edwards has left. This is do or die for Leon Edwards. He's got to do something big. Where we pulled it from, I only know it. Still at the back of your head. Yeah. I always wonder what, like, what, what, what would he say, you know? Like, Cross kick Leon! Which one? He may have resigned himself to losing a decision, but that is not the cloth from which he is cut. Leon's story, you will love Kamaru's. Losing to Leon doesn't take anything away from what he's accomplished in the USC and the secret battles he fought behind the scene. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you there. Take care.